You might be wondering why this video was taken down and has now been put back up. It's simply because I had to edit one word out because it had a dual meaning that I was totally unaware of and it was pointed out to me in the comments section. So I do apologize for that. Also because I had to re-edit it, I've changed one other aspect. It was the, the little bit about zooming. I've added a little bit of extra info in about that, but the whole rest of the video is intact. Better be safe than sorry in this day and age. Context doesn't matter anymore to these people. So yeah, there you go. I, if you want more info, check the comments out. Conan Unconquered, is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words. Build your stronghold and assemble an unconquerable army to survive the savage hordes in this real-time survival strategy game set in the world of Conan the Barbarian, developed by the Command and Conquer veterans at Petriglith. Before we get into the gameplay, let's have a quick look at the graphics. They're not amazing. Um, they, they look pretty dated, to be honest with you. There's quite a few graphical options in this. You can change... Um, Quite a few of the different resolutions there's a lot of stuff you can turn off if you are having graphical drops i wasn't having huge ones but it was i could see there was a little bit of uh, frame drops now and then nothing that would distract me enough from the gameplay uh, the guy i was playing co-op with nash he had to drop his graphic settings a bit he was on a 1070 laptop a gaming laptop so he had to drop a few down but he was still playing it okay so it is playable on on a, a mid-range system but you might have to make a few graphical alterations a lot of sound options in this game uh, which is nice to see the music's quite good as well the sound effects are, are okay nothing to write home about but it just it, you know it does its job you, you get all the voices going it's it's fine it's fine now the game itself is very similar to the are billions there is no other way of putting it it is a, just a carbon copy with a cone and skin on it now there are obviously differences um but the actual core gameplay that i'm talking about is pretty much exactly the same as the arbillions you have to build up a settlement and then waves of enemies will attack the waves are obviously a bit different to how the arbillions plays the arbillions the waves don't come at you pretty much in the same way that they do in this game it's relentless in conan and i would say that conan is way more brutal than the arbillions and the arbillions is a brutal game but this is freaking ridiculously brutal the way it works is you will have to build little houses for your people then you'll get more people and for the, when you get more people they'll need more food so you have to build more resources to get food in and then you'll be able to build and train up units you have to claim land which gives you flag points which you need to build other buildings as you go through the buildings you will unlock technology trees in many different directions you can see here on the screen all the buildings available there are shit tons of them i'm quite sure that half of these were made for nothing as far as i'm concerned because i'll never get to see them i can't get past wave 17 at the minute we just get trounced and the main reason for that is the game's new we don't know what buildings to build in what order yet we don't know which units are the best we're all just in the trial and error mode at the minute um is it fun yes of course it's fun you build up walls you build up ballistas you build up towers you put archers in them and then the enemy attacks you get you get a, a warning that a wave's coming and then you'll see the direction it's going to come giving you a few chances to fortify them areas of your base outside of your base in the world there's these giant boss fights that you can have these big monsters and each one of them drops a special item that your hero can use um i'll come to the heroes in a second but these items are absolutely fantastic that some of them give you a shit ton of gold and some of you are some of them are just like this big aoe that is absolutely brutal and fantastic to use when you're uh, getting attacked by the the hordes that are coming at you and it just gets progressively harder and the waves come at you um in bigger and better numbers so you have to kind of have a big base very well defended and that's the hard thing about it trying to have the time to do all that you can pause and build while you're in pause but it's still not enough it's it's just so fucking hard and what doesn't help is the some of the design choices in this game are just staggeringly bad now i can't tell whether it's a bug or a design choice but when the enemy come at you with fire and they start setting fire to your stone walls <laughs> how does that work you have to put them out and you have to guys you have to put them out in the most mundanely shit way possible because each piece of wall is a little section you have to click on a guy right click on the wall and then you'll see it drop 
and a little drop of water appear and that means they'll go and put the fucking fire out but when there's a whole section of wall maybe 10 sections on fire they will only put out the one little section you clicked if you want them to put the whole wall out you have to click on every little fucking section and now did the developers deliberately put that in to, to kind of take up your time in between waves so you can't be doing other more important stuff i don't know to me it just it needs fixing your men don't even do it without you telling them it's like after the battle and everybody's been killed they'll just stand there while rome fucking burns which kind of sucks they should have an option where you can just click a button and say right go to defensive duties where you'll put out fires and shit and they should be able to run up the walls putting out the fires why not why not i mean why the f do we have to do it when we've got all these other things to do that are way more important the map's quite large on this game and uh, that means you should be able to zoom right out to see what's going on but you can't uh, you have to scroll around the map which is problematic now there is an extended zoom mode you can click in the options which will allow you to zoom out further than the standard zoom that you get it's still not enough and it does come with a warning that it will inhibit or have an effect on the actual fps of the game now the characters that you get and this is a big you get two characters with this game, but there are three characters in the game. Oh yeah. You get Conan, obviously. Conan the Barbarian, he does AoEs, he has abilities that you unlock over time as he levels up. And you have, I can't remember her name, we'll call her Katie. But she's Valeria or something, like that. well, Katie. You get Katie, she has her own powers as well. And then you have this mage guy. Now, we were watching the developers stream this. And this mage guy seems awesome. He is a caster, which means you can put him in a tower and he can cast his overpowered shit from the safety of a tower. He can heal. He can do damage that one shots the enemy. He's awesome. He's also 10 fucking 90 fucking mother fucking nine. Day one DLC guys. He's a day one DL fucking C this guy. Day one DLC. Day you only get two characters in this game. There are three. So they've took a third of the fucking characters away in a game that costs £25 and they're selling you the other one for a fucking brown one, an Ayrton. Which means if you want the full game, it's £34.99. £34.99. £34.99. £34.99. £34.99. The billions is £23.99. Better polished. Better graphics. Better hordes. Better buildings. Doesn't have co-op though. And this is the problem. You see, the co-op side of things makes this game really good fun. Co-op is a game changer in this game. And as much as I don't want to say this, I am gonna have to be honest, I'd rather play this than They Are Billions because I have more fun playing this than They Are Billions. I think Day One DLC is f***ing hideous. I really do. I don't think the game looks as good and I don't think it's as deep and I think it's overpriced. But it's better than they are billions purely because playing this co-op is fucking brilliant. And I can only imagine how brilliant they are billions would be in co-op as well. But it isn't. And I don't even think it's going to get co-op. And I think the developers of they are billions need to wake the fuck up. Do I think this game will clean up? No, I don't. I think it's far too expensive, way too overpriced for what you get. It's a wave defender, that's what it is. It's not, you know, some kind of huge RTS game. It's not, it's it's a it's a quite a basic game. Very easy to play, very hard to master. But it's a one trick pony. Yes, it has single player where the waves come at you a bit slower. It has co-op, it has a challenge mode. But at the end of the day, it's all the same type of game. And I think £34, and that's how much this is. The fact that it's £24.99 with a day one DLC, f*** that for a game of dominoes. This game is £34.99 because that's how much the full game costs. So I'm reviewing this as a £34.99 game. And I'll tell you this, if this didn't have a day one DLC, I would be thumbing it up because it is worth a buy if you were to get all of them three characters for £24.99. But I'm sorry... The day one DLC has cost this game a big fucking juicy red fucking thumb down because they have took away this character that looks so damn fun to play and they've slapped a tenor on him. I think it's despicable, disgusting and I think it's just fucked up. So 
Yeah, thanks for the press copy and all that, but kiss my f***ing sweaty rectum if I think this is a thumb up when you are taking away one third of the f***ing characters and slapping a f***ing brown one on it. So there you go guys. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's good. But it ain't worth 34 f***ing smelly ones.